Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Small RV Adventures. It's all about staying in shape, walking, keeping the blood flowing. On this episode, we're going to do a lot of running around. The kids already ate breakfast. You saw that already. We have the same breakfast almost every day unless we have something special. And when we do have something special, if I have the camera out, we'll take the camera out. But this is the work side of the RV. We're just doing this to start off the video, and we're going to head out and go for a walk. We're going to go around this circle maybe two times. It's about a mile walk. It takes about a half an hour. And we're going to do this to keep the kids in shape, keep us in shape, get that blood flowing, and just have a good time as a family before I have to start my work week on this episode of the Smalls RV Adventures. Now, guys, remember to click the like, comment, and subscribe button. A lot of people are becoming unknowingly subscribed to the channel, so make sure to check that make sure that you're still subscribed and hit the notification bell so that you know when we post new videos. We post videos on this channel about every three days consistently for the past two years. So on our journeys, if you see a video you like, go back and watch some of the past videos. We have a lot of videos on the channel to help you guys out. I'm Ricky. These are the kids. My wife Anita is behind the camera. So let's go on that walking journey, baby. Come on, guys. Let's go. Let's go. These are the kids going away for their journey. I just dropped the leash by mistake from Mac, but Kalisha picked it up. He likes to fight and get into the grass, but I don't like him going into that high grass. <laughs> oh, this is so funny, this is the way that they hold them back. Usually in this high grass, a lot of deer eat off of this and feed off of this grass here. And this is usually where the ticks are. So when I'm walking my pup, I don't let him go into this grass because usually when he walks in that grass, we found ticks on him, so we don't walk, let him walk there. He's fine walking where That's we are. On our property, we always mow the grass and keep it very, very low. The deer usually walk right through our property because there's nothing to feed on because the grass is so low. With the high grass, a lot of the times the ticks jump off the deer or brush off, and they're right on that tall grass. So when your pets come through, your pets usually get, not attacked, but the deer, the the ticks or whatever it is jumps right on your your pet a lot of times mac he still needs a lot of correction to follow you when you're walking but after the first few corrections he usually walks and he doesn't pull you but he still needs the corrections every time we come out he's still a young pup mommy dearest he's out burning the calories too we go on these nice little hikes what are you doing flying kalisha you flying <laughs> yes, the kids have got all their PJs. See, out here in the woods, in the back country, you have a lot of these little hills, and you struggle to get up them. But this is all about the workout when you're struggling to get up these hills. It makes it a lot funner just to go along. And when the family is there, you're talking, so you really don't feel a lot of the pain when you're walking. But it's really fun. Even Mac, when you're holding him, he pulls you up the hill. So it makes it a little more enjoyable because you don't have to work as hard if you're holding him. But the only thing, if you have one of those Apple Watches or one of those things that track your walking, you're not going to get an accurate count if you're holding the camera and you're holding the dog because it goes by the movements in your wrist. The fall foliage is coming into effect. We're just a couple of days from the start, the official start of the fall season. The fall foliage is already underway. When we get back to the rig, I'm going to let you guys see how we use the lead time battery. I showed it in a couple of the videos, but I never showed you how we charge it up and how we use the power that's stored inside. So as soon as we get back to the rig, I'm going to hook that up to a power inverter and show you how much power you can get out of it. You're all right, boo-boo. You all right? You okay, Mac? He breathing heavy. You need some milk? My boy, he's like, oh man, but he loves these walks. Look at that tail wagging. You can tell from that tail wag he's having a good time walking. I like being out here, even though it's hot. Here's another look at those four colors coming into the trees. And the working out family. Here we go. 
everybody's getting into shape. So we at the more than quarter way, quarter mark, quarter mile mark of the walk, of the hike, and we're doing so well. But almost time to show you those lead time battery setup hookup. Just preliminary. I'm going to show you guys more of the setup as time goes by, so keep tuning in. Hooking your connections up to this lead time battery is quite simple. All you need is an inverter. Again, these are all things I just found lying around the house. All you need is an inverter to pull the power outside of the battery. You're also going to need a way to store the energy and the battery. So you can get it from solar or you can get it from shore power. So what I'm going to do without even taking the camera off, I'm not going to edit anything. I'm going to show you guys how we hook up everything. I'm going to start with the positive first. I'm just going to take the positive end of the inverter. You unscrew it. Again, I'm using four gauge wire. These are some uh, heavy duty wires here. And this is a thousand watt inverter. And all I'm doing is tightening up the negative side. And here is the uh, Noco Genius. It's a 10 amp battery charger. You're going to take the positive, the negative side of that with your negative side of the inverter. You connect it with your screw. I always like to tap this first pull out any energy that's in there with your screw you're gonna put that on just like that then you have screwdriver and let me lay this down flat and you're just gonna screw this in again I'm gonna do everything live so you guys can see how I'm doing it and you screw this in again this is preliminary when I set up a system, I usually put fuses and everything in so that you can protect your equipment. But just to show you guys how I'm doing it, I'm going to do it this fast, easy way for, with this lead time battery. So, right, so now we have the negative side hooked up. We can hook up the positive side. This is where it gets a little tricky, where you want to make sure that your power is off on your inverter. Mine was on because I was using it. And you're going to want to check the power because sometimes when you hook up both the negative and positive, you're going to get that initial shock. You want to get that out of there. So we're going to hook this up first. I'm going to put the negative end on, which is not hard to do at all. You just snap it on. Ricky, you can let the dog in. Forgot Mac was outside. And then you want to tap because you may get a spark. That was that first initial spark. It won't spark again. It usually does it one time. And that's it. So you put these together. You want to get that spark out of there. And then you put this on. And then once you have these on, you can tighten it up. Again, I'm not going to edit any of this part out because I want to show you guys how exactly this hooks up. So again, I'm just using this battery clamp here. Everything is going to get on. And there we go. And you can orient this any way that you like. If you like it to the side, if you like it to the front, any way you like to get this on here. So now... I put this tip back on. We have a way to use the power now and we safeguard the terminal battery turners by putting these ending clips on red for positive, black for negative. And I'll turn this around so you can see it. Once you turn it on, you have the power light that will come on in this green. Now these are all active. You can use them. This does not come with a USB outlet, but you do have three sure power outlets. So now with the Noco Genius, you just plug this into an outlet and that's how you recharge this battery. So this part I am going to edit just to show you how to keep it charged. So a good thing 
about these batteries is that as soon as you plug in the NOCO battery charger, you sell it to lithium. That's the blue mark there. You can see the state of the battery. Once it charges all the way up, this would light up in green. This button here to let you know that it's all good. But this is a 230 amp hour lead time battery, pure lithium. Now, some people may ask, can you use this while it's charging? Yes, you sure can. So remember, you just turn on your inverter. It's going to power up green. You turn on your appliance. And I don't know if you can see that. But there it is. It's charging. It's at 91%. So remember, when you're out on the road and you don't want to, you don't have access to shore power, you can turn on your inverter using your lead time battery and have power all the way through. And this is a big battery, so it has a lot to power. Remember, the more of these batteries you have hooked up in series or parallel, the more things you can power. You also can increase the size of the inverter. Here we have just a small 1,000 watt inverter. I have another 3,000, I believe it's a 4,000 watt inverter in the sticks and bricks that I'm not using, but I can connect that one and it's pure sine wave and I can hook it up to this lead time battery and you can power this whole rig. I haven't done calculations to see how much the rig pulls by itself. But the other rig that we had, it only pulled 250 watts. This one won't pull much more if you're not running the ACs. But the fridge is does run on shore power and propane. So if we're stationary and we don't have on the propane, we can plug the rig into this battery and power the whole RV for hours. Or we can just turn on the propane so that it can keep the fridge cold. and we can plug all the other devices into this lead time 230 amp hour battery and everything can be powered inside the rig. So it's pretty cool. I'm going to put a link down in the description for this lead time battery. Uh, if you use the link that I provide, you do get a discount. So just remember that. Remember, guys, check and look to see if you're still subscribed. And if you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. We bring you these videos showing you nice products so that you don't have to waste your time and money buying a product that you don't need or you don't want or doesn't work for you. We do all the testing out on this channel so that you don't have to test it out and spend your money. Right. Ricky came into the frame. That's my oldest son. You guys seen him before. He got a lot bigger. He's going to be testing out the Wi-Fi because we do have the Starlink hooked up into the RV. That's how we're powering everything. By the way, that's our channel that's on the other screen there. But, Ricky, how's the power going with that? Pretty good. It's pretty good? What's the uh, percentage at now? 93. It's at 93. So it was at 91, and we're pulling power out of that lead, lead time 12-volt, 230-amp-hour battery using this 1,000-watt inverter. So it's pretty good. And I'll show you guys now how full the battery is using that NOCO battery charger. That's a good way to tell how much battery, how much energy is being stored in that battery. Is the Wi-Fi hooked up? Um, yep. And that's hooked up, powered by Starlink. And we do now have the in motion feature. So I'm going to try that the next time that we move the motor home. I'm going to put it in the dashboard and just see how good it works. We still have this other portable power station by AI Volt, and this one is uh, we leave it connected just in case of emergencies so as I showed you before it was that two bars well it was that one bar before now it's at two bars remember it's set to the lithium 12 volt let me get a little closer look on you I don't know if the 12 volt is going to show up but that's set to lithium 12 volt and once it gets near full it will float charge so here's a backup view of it. And this is how you set this system up. This is just the simplest way to set it up to use the energy that's in the battery and to put energy back into the battery. This is the most simple way. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. You know, I'm trying to make these videos a little short. I don't know if you guys like them longer or shorter, but I like to sh like show you guys a lot of the things that we buy for the channel so that you can have a sense of some of the things that you can try out and maybe it'll work for you. 
This TV right now is on a stand that we bought from Amazon. It's not a sponsored product, but this is something that we set up when we get to our sticks and bricks or to the campground or to our boondocking location so that the kids can watch TV. The little home does come with three televisions. But sometimes that's not enough. Sometimes if we're all in the living room and we're watching the living room television, the kids want to watch something else. So we have this TV right here on this nice stand. It's like a tripod stand just made for TVs. And it has a bracket in the back to hold the TV up. So we have this here so the kids can play their video games or they can watch TV. The girls like to watch their Taylor Swift concerts. Which one of y'all like Taylor Swift? Nobody? Nobody? Y'all Swifties? Any of my boys Swifties? No? I'm a Swifty. Dad's a Swifty with the girls, all right? I like Taylor Swift. I'm a Swifty. Taylor, if you're watching this, rock on, girl. I'm, I'm, I, I, like your, I like your music. But, yeah, we, we bring a lot of things to you guys on this channel just so that you can see that you can camp, you can be comfortable, you can go with technology, be modernized, don't fall behind and don't get angry at people that use this technology when they camp. It's out there for us to use so that we all can enjoy the great outdoors. And just remember, when you're in Arizona, when you're in that desert and there's no hookups and you got solar, you have Starlink because your internet, your phone lines, AT&T, T-Mobile, they're not going to work out there far in the desert where it's nothing to connect to connect to. But if you have the Starlink, and you have access to the sky, your Starlink is going to give you internet. And you have to have power. So all these things come into effect. When you have solar, you have these lithium batteries. This one that we have from lead time, 230 amp hour. You store that energy. And when you get out into those boondocking deserted areas, you can use your batteries. Of course, this rig also has a generator. But who wants to run the generator all night long? You can run the generator, charge up your batteries. Then once your batteries are charged, turn your generator off and just run off your batteries. And you can save gasoline or diesel, whatever your generator runs on, by using your lithium batteries, especially overnight. Especially if it's not too hot and you can run your max air fan or you can open up your windows and stay cool. That's much better than running your AC while you're sleeping and running your generator. Saves power. So remember, guys, hit that like button, comment below. And check to see if you subscribe. If you're not subscribed already, we would love to have you aboard on the family with us. We travel all around the U.S. Me, all of the kids right now, they want me to end the video so they can keep watching their TV. But guys, hit that like, comment, subscribe button. Check to see if you subscribe. We're about to go back out. Enjoy the rest of our day. Please keep joining us. We're about to start cooking some more on this channel because fall is coming in. I love the great outdoors. And cooking, no bugs. So remember, keep joining in. We have a lot of more products to bring to you, to show you, so that you can use on your own adventures. Stay tuned, everybody. See you next time. Bye, Bye everybody.